My message today, as I was asking God, what am I going to share today? And God gave me the word suffering. Suffering. Hallelujah. Because I came on Monday, I think it was Monday, Tuesday. And Pastor Mike called me when I was at the airport. Florence, I, okay? I said, I'm here. He was asking me, when are you coming back? I said, I'm here waiting for my luggage at his foot. Then on Thursday, he, called, he sent me a message that we should meet. And on Friday, he told me I have to share in the, in the, in the church. First, I said no. Eventually, I agreed. <laughs> and then when I went back, the Lord gave me the word, suffering. And I was thinking about suffering. Hallelujah. Let us go in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 29. Hallelujah. The word came suffering. Hallelujah. You know, we have to embrace the suffering. Suffering is part of our faith. For, for to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake. Hallelujah. There is where in Psalms, I don't know if it is 37, it says, Many are the affliction of the righteous, but God delivers him out of them all. There is always a purpose and the reason for suffering. In a situation or circumstance which causes pain or suffering has a reason. It is not really enjoyable when you are going through it, but there is a reason and a purpose why God allows you to go through it. Hallelujah. And I'm going to mention some points here. One, sometimes I go through suffering for God to equip me and prepare me for another level. Maybe to promote me to another level. It might be in ministry. It might be in your workplace. We can look at the life of Joseph. When you read from Genesis to 37, to Genesis 41, all those chapters, Joseph went through a lot. He was hated by his brothers. They almost killed him. He was sold as a slave, separated from his family. He was accused for nothing, for being righteous. He was accused. And he was thrown in a prison. But all that God was preparing him to lift him, to lift him up to that place of leadership where he was going to save so many lives. When you look into the life of Joseph, he never complained. He embraced everything he was going through. Awesome. I believe he was just looking on God and trusting God. Yeah. Because even when that woman wanted to have an affair with him, he said, how can I do this sin to sin before my God? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So Joseph was focusing on God. And when we read verse Genesis 41 and verse 51, please. You, do you know what it is to be separated from your family? Joseph was separated. He was in a fallen land. It is so painful. It was so painful for him. But when he had his first son, he, he said, Joseph called the name of the firstborn, Manasseh. For God has made me forget all my child and all my father's house. I believe that that boy brought joy and hope into Joseph's life because he was alone. He didn't have a brother, no family. He was with strangers. Verse 52. It's, then he had a second child, Ephraim. 
And he said, for God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Hallelujah. You might be going through affliction or suffering or pain. But I'm here to tell you that even though you are going through that, but you can be fruitful. Amen. Despite your pain, your suffering, you can be fruitful. Hallelujah. Joseph was fruitful. Amen. Number one, as I said, God equips us and prepares us to go to another level, made to promote us. Yeah. Hallelujah. When we look at the life of David, from 1 Samuel chapter 16 to, to chapter 31, George David was persecuted. He was hiding in caves, running because Saul wanted to kill him. That's why you can see in Psalm, he used to say, you are my hiding place. You are my rock of refuge. Amen. When David was, I think, writing or saying those Psalms, he was going through a rough time. But all the time, he was running to God. He would see God as his hiding place, as his refuge. He said, under your wings, I take refuge. Hallelujah. And I'm here to tell you today, no matter what you are going through, you can go under his wings, and you take refuge under his wings, and he's going to carry you through. You are going to see your breakthrough, and your breakthrough is near. Hallelujah. God is so faithful. Number two, sometimes God allows me to go through pain or suffering so that I can be able to help others who are going through the same thing. Because when you have gone through it, you can easily help someone. Amen. If you are not married like me, you cannot go to someone who is married and start giving them counseling, counseling because you don't know even what you are talking about. Amen. But if you are being through that journey, you can easily help someone. Who is going through it? We can see in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 18. Our Lord Jesus Christ. He went through suffering and pain. For in that he himself has suffered. Being tempted is able to aid those that are being tempted. Hallelujah. Jesus went through the suffering. He went through pain. He was tempted. And when we are going through that he is able to help us. That's why the Bible says he's a merciful, merciful high priest. Because he knows what we are going through. I might not know what you are going through right now, but he knows what you are going through. Because he has been there before. Everything we are facing in life, Jesus faced it when he was on this earth. That's why he's so merciful. Hallelujah. He's so merciful. That's why he said, come to me. All you are labor and heavy laden. And I'll give you rest. Hallelujah. Point number three. Sometimes God allows us to go through suffering. And that suffering is going to bring glory to the Father in the end. Hallelujah. Let us go in the book of Acts chapter 16 verse 29 to 34. Hallelujah. Then he called for a light ran in and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he, brought, and he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, watched their stripes. Immediately, he and all his house, his family, were saved, were baptized. Now, when he had brought them out into his house, he set, them, he set food before them. And he rejoiced, having believed in God. Hallelujah. When you read that, chapter 16 of Acts, that is when Silas and Paul were beaten, they were thrown in prison, they put them in the inner prison, they were guarding them, but what did they do in prison? In the midst of their suffering, they started worshiping God. And the Bible said that the foundation of the prison were shaken, and the doors were opened. 
And the God thought that maybe they have run out. That's when he came and he fell on them and said, what can I do? And they said, believe in the Lord Jesus. The whole family was saved and the glory went back to Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus suffered, but his suffering brought us salvation. Hallelujah. Your suffering, which you are going through right now, Maybe someone, someone, some one day, you are going to stand, you are going to testify, and someone will be delivered, someone will be encouraged because of what we have gone through, you have gone through. That's why you need to embrace it. Don't complain, don't mama, don't look back, don't ask God why, why me? He knows why. And he will, tell, he will not tell you why because he is God. Hallelujah. I remember one day when the Lord told me to go to Zimbabwe. And the instruction was that I had to go by road, by bus. So I went to Uganda. I left my UK passport and I took my Ugandan passport. And I had to go by land from Kampala to Zimbabwe. First I went to Rwanda, I had a break for two days, then from Rwanda to Zimbabwe, it took me four nights, four days and four nights in the bus. I suffered. I had to pay money to go through those borders, and I really suffered a lot. To the extent I was left with only 40 pounds and 30 dollars. And I remember when I reached at the, the border, to cross the border of Zimbabwe and Zambia, they demanded money, but I had only thirty dollars and forty pounds, and I didn't know where I was going. I just, I was just going. And when they wanted me to give me, to give me them money to stop my passport, I wanted to cry, but I said, Lord, I take authority in uh, at, at this place in the mighty name of Jesus. So when I went to hand over my passport, the man demanded for money. Then I gave him $10, but I said, I am tired because all the time they're asking for me for money and I don't have any money. So the, money, the man gave me back my $10 and it was stamped free of charge. <laughs> and I reached uh, Harare and I was asking the bus drivers, where, where, where can I get a place to stay overnight? So they, every place they took me, I couldn't pay. Eventually, they took me to the place where I had to share with a, a girl. She was from Malawi, so we stayed in the same room and I paid $10 a night, uh, that night. Anyway, the following day, I was able to go far away from, uh, from Alale to another town called Kadoma. That's where I stayed for two weeks. They gave me only two weeks. But I suffered a lot, but I, I didn't know why God brought me all the way from Uganda by land. And when I was in Kadoma, I managed to minister in the Methodist church. But I wasn't satisfied because I didn't know this is not why God brought me here. Then when I was coming back after two weeks, I told my son that you buy me a ticket. And he, he paid for my ticket to fly from Alari to Entebbe. And when I reached that airport in the morning, 10 a.m., I was not on the plane. They couldn't find my ticket. So I was stranded at the airport. I didn't know what to do. My son was saying we paid and Kenya Airways, they couldn't find my ticket. So I was there. I didn't know that mission to Zimbabwe was at the airport. So I stayed at the airport overnight. And when it was around midnight, there is a young boy who came and my, my phone was, I was completely dead. I didn't have the charger. So I borrowed his, his charger and I charged my phone. It was like 25 working at the airport and he went he, we went back he told me he would come when he, it was his break time he came and as we are chatting i started telling him about jesus christ and i saw this young man start, he started crying so we shared a lot and that was the mission to him but we only one soul just one person so god allowed me to go through all that suffering for only one person I remember the last two, two days when I was in the bus, I, I didn't eat because I didn't have money. I said this 40 pounds and 30 dollars, I cannot touch it anymore because I don't know where I'm going, I don't know where I'm going to sleep. So I have to keep this money. 
And for the last two days in that bus, I could see women having biscuits, having this. And really, I cried because I didn't have anything. I cried in tears and said, Lord, why am I suffering like this? But when that young man gave his life to the Lord at the airport, he gave his life to Christ around 4, between 3 and 4 a.m. Remember, I came 10 in the morning. And it's 3, 4 a.m. the following day, I am still stranded at the airport. And when he gave his life to Christ, all the way was clear now for me to go. Mm. By that time, I got my ticket. Amen. Hallelujah. And in that evening, I was on the plane. But God allowed me to suffer. If I went to Zimbabwe by plane and coming back by plane, there is no way I could meet that young boy that midnight at the airport. Sometimes we don't know why we are suffering, but God knows why we are suffering. You might be suffering in your body. You have sickness, disease, maybe in your marriage, workplace, finances. It doesn't matter what you are going through. It is for the reason and the purpose. You embrace it and know that God is with you. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Even though you go through the rivers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Point number four. Sometimes we go through what we are going through for God to teach us to obey him. Teaching us to learn obedience. Hebrews chapter five. Verse 8. Hallelujah. Our Lord Jesus Christ went through that. The Bible says, though he was a son, that is the son of God, yet he learned obedience, obedience by the things which he suffered. Yes. Maybe you are suffering, the suffering which you are going through right now. God is teaching you something. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you need to embrace it. Mm. Don't complain. Don't regret. Don't ask why. Because he knows why. Point number five. Sometimes we go through what we are going through because God wants to humble us and to test us. To test our faith. To test us. Are we going to obey him? Are we going to complain? Hallelujah. The Deuteronomy chapter eight. Verse 2 to 3, please. And this is Moses when he was telling the children of Israel. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you to know what is in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you, allowed you to anger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. He took them through that wilderness to humble them, to test them, to know whether they will keep his commands or not, and even to, to know what is in their heart. You know, sometimes the mouth is speaking something else, and the heart is speaking something else. I can lift my arms and say, Lord, I worship you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I trust you. And in my heart, I am full of fear and unbelief. So God looks in the heart. That's why he tests the heart to see what is in there. God doesn't tempt us, but he will test us. And you know when you pass the test, you go on another level. Hallelujah. In Uganda, in the schools, when you don't pass the exam, the children, they don't promote them to another school. Here they do that, but in Uganda they don't. You can stay in the same class for four or five years. If you don't pass, you, are, you stay in the same class. So God tests us for promotion. To know whether they will keep his command, to know what is in their heart, to let them know that man 
does not live on bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Amen. That is to show them that you don't have to depend on food, but you can depend on me. You can depend on my word. You can trust my word. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. God is so good. Amen. When we are going through what we are going through, our attitude really matters to the Lord. Hallelujah. My attitude will quicken my breakthrough. My attitude will quicken the journey. Oh, my attitude will delay me. The children of Israel delayed, went around for 40 years. And only two, Joshua and Caleb, were able to enter the promised land. And all those who were young were born in the wilderness. Even Moses was not able to enter attitude. Their attitude was not right. They had a negative attitude. They were complaining. They were murmuring. They wanted even to stone Moses. And even Moses was fed up. I think that's why he made a mistake because of them. And they went around for 40 years. The journey would have taken them a short period of time. But because of the negativity in their heart, they went around and they were not able to enter that land. Hallelujah. Yeah. And for us to be able to enter our destiny, we need to have a positive attitude despite what we are going through. Yeah. The children of God, were, the old vision, were complaining, they were murmuring, they were full of fear, worry, anxiety. All these are the fruits of unbelief. When you are going through something and you have fear in your heart, you are worried, you are anxious, hallelujah, complaining, those are the fruits of unbelief, which needs to be dealt with. You deal with that unbelief. At least, say, Lord, give me faith to believe. Be open and say, Lord, I am full of fear, worry, and angst, anxiety because I don't believe. Help me to believe. Hallelujah. Yeah. We can see that because of unbelief, they were not able to enter. Hebrews 3, 16 to 19. Please. For who having had rebelled, indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Now with him was he angry for 40 years. Was it, was it not with those who sinned, whose corpse fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who did not obey? So we see they could not enter in because of unbelief. Unbelief is a killer. Unbelief has hindered so many people to do what God has called us to do. Unbelief will cripple us in ministry. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Unbelief. We have to believe God. We have to trust God. We have to depend totally, totally on God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Don't look at yourself. Don't look at your circumstance. But depend totally on God. Yeah. And God will do it through you. Yeah. You'll see your breakthrough. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Negative attitude. Hallelujah. Let us look at the positive attitude. When we look at Job, in Job chapter 1, verse 20, despite all the suffering, the pain, the loss, Job went through. Then Job arose, tore his robe, and shaved his head, and he fell to the ground, and he worshipped God. Hallelujah. In the midst of pain, suffering, loss, Job was able to fall down and worship God. That is the man with a positive attitude. Daniel, chapter 3, verse 28. When Shadrach, Meshach were thrown through that fire, Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel, and he delivered his servant who trusted in him, and they frustrated the king's word and yield their bodies that they should 
nor serve, nor worship any God except their God. Those three Hebrew boys, what they did, they trusted God. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. The fire was there. Even they made it more hotter seven times. But they didn't look at the circumstance. Yeah. They focused their eyes on God. And they said, our God will deliver us. Even if he doesn't deliver, we are not going to worship your God. I don't know what you are going through right now But I'm here to tell you that Your God whom you serve is going to see you through Your God is going to deliver you Maybe you need healing I don't know what you are going through Maybe finances, maybe it is a job I am here to tell you that your God Is going to come And is going to deliver you Just you trust Hallelujah Trust, hallelujah Trust, don't allow fear, don't allow anxiety, don't allow those things. Because the moment you allow them in, the, in your heart, you are pushing God away. And you cannot come in and work when we are worried, when we are full of fear and anxiety. The Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And when the king is pleased, I'm telling you, when the king is well pleased, he will act. When the king is well pleased, Sickness will, 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 will disappear. Tumors will go. Cancer will be healed. Yeah. Hallelujah. When the king is well pleased, whatever we are, we are, we are facing, it will vanish. Amen. Hallelujah. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. Hallelujah. That means we have to deal with our fears, with our worries, and with our anxiety. Hallelujah. Amen. Daniel chapter 6 and verse 23. Hallelujah. Now the king was exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. Daniel was taken up out of the den and no injured whatever was found on him because he believed in his God. Because he believed he was able to come out of that den of the lions. Even there was no injury on him because he believed in God. Hallelujah. You can't go through that, be allowed to go through, to be thrown in those lines if you don't believe and if you don't have peace. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the peace of God rules and guards our hearts. Yeah. And I believe Daniel, even though they said they will throw him when the lions did, he had that peace, yes. the peace of God in him. Yeah. And he knew that my God is with me. My, my God is able to take me through, to carry me through. I was thinking, what was Daniel doing all that night with the lions? I think that we are talking about the majesty of God. Oh God, I believe he opened the mouth of the lions. And Daniel started to communicate with the lions. Maybe Daniel was worshipping God with the lions. And they were worshipping him all the night. Do you think they were just looking at the Daniel? No. If God was able to open the mouth of the donkey, he can even open the mouth of the lions. Amen. Maybe they were sharing how God is good, how powerful he is. And Daniel had that communication with the lions all the night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Without faith, it is impossible to believe God. God wants us to believe him. I am just here to encourage you. I don't know what you are going through. Hallelujah. God knows it, but just embrace it and enjoy the journey. Amen. Don't complain. Amen. Don't murmur. God knows what we are going through. Yeah. And he is with you to deliver and to rescue. Amen. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Not one, but many. But the Lord delivers him out of them all. Amen. Maybe right now you are going through something. If we are not going through something right now, maybe you have just come out of something. And maybe you are about to enter into it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he never called us only to believe in him, but to suffer for him. Suffering is part of it. So we need to embrace it and enjoy the journey. Worship him. Trust him. Believe him. And let the peace of God Lord, and guard your heart in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I have one verse to go. That is Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 12. 
Beware, brethren, lest there be in you any evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. The living God. That means unbelief is evil. Amen. God sees unbelief as something which is evil. You can say that I don't do anything bad, but unbelief before God is evil, disgusting, dirty before God. He said, let there be, beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you that evil heart of unbelief, of unbelief in departing from the living God. So we need to fight this unbelief. It is a spirit. You can fight it. The Bible says, resist the devil and flee from you. Amos 3.3 says, how can two work together unless they agree? So we don't agree with this unbelief. We denounce it, we resist it, we reject it in the mighty name of Jesus. And it has ears, it will flee. Hallelujah. Amen. May God bless you so much. Hallelujah.